Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. I'm Noe Ruiz, designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning everybody, I'm Pedro Ruiz, creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we're here to share 3 d printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this year we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. Welcome to episode 301. Hello everybody, we're hanging out in the Discord chat room. So if you want to join in uh, during the show live, you can drop in some comments, questions, all the fun things. Uh, We'll, we'll uh, say hello to everybody in, in, in this morning. We're posting all the links to everything we're talking about in the Discord, so make sure to follow us on discord.gg slash Adafruit. Giving shout out to everybody hanging out every morning. We got Mark Gambler, we got Mr. Certainly Bruce, Jim Hendrickson, Brent is hanging hey Brent. out. Good morning. Also in the Facebook, on Periscope, on Twitch, LinkedIn, I believe. Right. You're All monitoring the Twitch and YouTube chat as well, so if folks are in there, we can say hello. And uh, yeah. We'll Go ahead in. and start off with this morning's housekeeping. Yeah, sure. We'll start off with, so if you want to check it out, go to discord.gg slash Adafruit, and you can click on the Circuit Python chat room, and uh, the meeting happens. You scroll all the way down to the voice chat. Right, you can join the voice. You have to I think become a part. If you want to participate, you can tag any of the folks um, in the community member moderators uh, asking if you want to uh, participate. So you can chat. You don't have to, you can just listen in. And then uh, it gets archived, put up on YouTube after a couple hours after the, the, uh, the recording. So folks can check out the playlist if they want to hear more about it. It's about an hour, it runs about an hour long. And it's a, it's, a, it's a really great time. I, I enjoy listening to it on the weekly, every week. So check it out. We got newsletters every week. There's a new, new newsletter. Adafruit.com slash newsletter. This one's focused on the new products that get added weekly to the Adafruit shop because there's always new stuff in the Adafruit shop. All right, we have this awesome banner. Vote, November 3rd. We have some resources on the website that we want to share with y'all and it's helping us out. On the Adafruit blog, we have this link to Axios, which is a nice site. Top five male voting mistakes and how to avoid them. Well, if you have uh, participated and you did your mail-in ballot, how is your mail-in ballot doing? I need to find out. So you can check on your status by clicking on your state. We're in Florida, click on that. And then it brings you to this site where you can uh, pop in your information and pull up your voter information. Dig a little deeper, you can find out if it's been seen, if it's waiting, if it didn't get seen. We wanna know. So uh, this is a great resource, check it out. Of course, check out all the blogs being posted every single hour on blog.afood.com. That's where I saw this one mm -hmm. just pop up. Yeah, really, really good resource. Like we checked it as soon as we saw it. We're like right away, let's go to it. And it's right here again. Shout out to Jesse May for posting that up. That's such a good resource. Check it out. Yeah, I checked on mine. It looks like they has been received. Drove about like an hour away yeah. to go drop it off at one of our official ballot drop offs. Yeah. And it looks like they got it. Sweet. That's great to hear. Good uh, peace of mind. All right, moving away from that, let's go uh, check out Adabox. This is awesome. Where's my promo text, Pedro? <laughs> you kids over here. <laughs> um, the next Adabox ships in a few days. There are a few openings left for Adabox 16. Of course, these are awesome curated products from Adafruit. They're unique collectibles and some exclusive discounts. All delivered quarterly. Subscribe now or, I want to say, give Adabox as a gift. Adabox.com is where you can check it out. Hashtag Halloween. Hashtag Adafruit. <laughs> hashtag promotion. This is awesome. So check it out. I'm going to hit up adabox.com and you got 13 hours left. If you haven't subscribed yet, you have 13 hours to do so. 
So uh, hopefully that's enticing enough for you folks. And uh, here's the little promo that we were playing in the background. It has to do with Adabox. I mean, Adabot. And dripping blood? What could this be? I don't know. It's probably I'm Halloween. I'm not allowed to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you can just say hashtag Halloween. And um, Adabot, we got some LEDs. They're hanging out. They're like, ha ha, I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> Even though you probably know. You say, ha ha. I'm having too much fun here. They just stop me. <laughs> what do you guys think it is? Tell me. I don't know. Adabot. It's <laughs> a mouth. You get a you get Adabox mouth ripped off. Whoosh, it's all bloody. There's going to be such a huge amount of projects that are going to be worked on. And uh, if you want to take a clue, just go uh, head on over clue. to <laughs> learn.adafruit.com. You can clue. see all of the latest uh, learn guides being produced. And yeah. that is a, There's a clue. nice little clue. Or get a clue from Adafruit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Super snazzy, Adabot. Thank you for uh, helping me out here. And a uh, shout out to Bruce Yan for putting together the artwork for this. Fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Tom also worked on the music for this. Oh, for sure. I didn't get to play the music because uh, I let, let uh, J JP um, play that one out. <laughs> I don't want to play it out. Sweet. And then we still have our... Um, we already go over the tiers for ordering? Nope. Let's go. Adafruit.com slash free. You can find out all the different goodies and offers that we're offering. Hmm. For orders that are $99 or more, you get the Parma Proto half-size breadboard. For orders that are $149 or more, you get the breadboard plus a random Stemma QT sensor board breakout. Um, we make sure that it's, it's random and that you don't get the same, that you don't receive uh, the same one. That's only if you order with your Adafruit account. That's right. We'll take, uh, keep track of that way. All right. For orders that are $200 or more, you get the Perma Proto, the Stemma Board, and free UPS ground shipping for continental US only. And then for orders that are $299 or more, you get the Perma Proto, you get the Stemma Board, you get the free UPS ground shipping continental US only, and a free Circuit Playground Express. Watch out. And it's glowy goodness. All right. And then there's some more text here if you want to know how many freebies you can get. You can get all of them. Limited time so far. Okay, how are we doing? We jumping back to Discord. Hi, folks. Just posting certainly. all the links in Thank all you. of the chats. Shout out certainly for all those certain links. All right, moving on. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Yeah, moving on to uh, the banners and stuff. Uh, daily newsletter, ladyfruitdaily.com. Check out those newsletters. There are daily doses of stuff you might miss. Content from the blog, projects, learn guides. Uh, they, they, geez, Adafruit, you produce too much. <laughs> we can't, we can't uh, keep track of it all. So we made uh, several ways to, uh, to keep you updated. Okay? I'm sorry, just post all the links here. No, I just quickly post the links. You enjoy my tombstones in the back here. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's project. This week's project is right behind us. It is this uh, foam tombstone, and yeah. behind it is an RGB matrix. Ba -bow. Yeah, this is awesome. So uh, we've been having a lot of fun uh, with the matrix portal that was released a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We had to do a bunch of Halloween related projects because it's that time of the year. Sure. So. It is in the back, nice and easy to mount. So this is just supposed to be an inspiration for attaching this to like your window or any cardboard cutouts that you might have. Uh, would definitely work as one of the eyeballs for this, but we thought we'd have like little ghosts on here on a tombstone. So it's super easy to grab any of these uh, inexpensive foam uh, core uh, tombstones are widely available you everywhere. Get like a pack for like a, a couple bucks. Yeah. Lots of different designs. You see a lot of folks use them. We, we figure a lot of folks have them. Why don't we just take one, try to cut out a hole for it, and, and pop in the display in the back there. That mm -hmm. way we have like this interactive uh, tombstone with so, a sweet like animation. So whether you want to display some text or you just want to play some bitmap sprite sheets, this is a really great way to do so. Yes, so the hero in this for the code is the sprite animation that is being played back on the Matrix portal. Yeah, you, you probably saw this on, um, on JP's workshop last week, and you'll probably see it again this week too. Um, this is some awesome code. It's a collab project with, um, with Melissa and JP. They put together a really, really quick way to um, 
basically iterate and have a slideshow of bitmaps that can be animated. So with bitmaps, you can animate them in circuit Python using display I/O, and then uh, the code uh, handles um, pulling in the bitmaps and then iterating through them. So you can use these buttons right here in the back to cycle through them. You can also break out those buttons if you want to do something else, like where maybe you, you do a press, uh, a, like you step on something, uh, that could trigger it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you have the Stemma Connector, so you can expand on this project if you want to add some, uh, some, pro uh, some PIR sensors and stuff. Yeah, I think one of the things that people immediately said was, oh, why aren't there some servos on there so you can like maybe move some of the cracked uh, pieces that are For exposing sure. the uh, matrix. So that's a nice idea too. Uh, in addition to having audio playback. When... That isn't a nice idea. It's, it's, it's in the works. Mm -hmm. it's, it's JP's work. <laughs> I hate to read it, it's spelled beans. J don't say I said that. <laughs> um, yeah, so server control is totally awesome and, and doable. Uh, and CircuitPython makes it really easy. We've got a lot of demo code uh, for folks to, 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 to quickly put it up together. Um, and then how did we make the, uh, the bitmaps here? The bitmaps are actually using the Memoji feature from iOS. Is our, is our audio okay? No, continue. All right. So the Memoji stuff um, allows you to, uh, to, create, uh, to puppeteer some of these icons. So you, it's something that's a part of iOS uh, with capable devices because it uses face tracking to animate the puppets. And then this one's some assets I pulled from, uh, from an After Effects plugin that lets you puppeteer digital characters. So uh, I, I ripped that and I created a bitmap and we'll talk about how to, uh, how to generate a sprite sheet uh, using some software. Yeah, we didn't want to make it so content creation driven since sure. this is an electronics project. Uh, we wanted to provide some of the assets so you can uh, go up and keep going. Um, since yeah. the asset creation does get into a little bit of, uh, one of the questions somebody asked here was, uh, how did you what that? did you study? It's, we studied 3D animation and video right. production. Right, traditional, so. yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, visual So this is what we like doing, but um, for our general audience, we didn't want to bore you guys with, uh, with all that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, JP does a good job of showing some fundamentals mm -hmm. in animation and then using uh, um, a sprite, which we'll talk about as the software, uh, to create these sprite sheets so it's not hard of a process. But we'll walk through all that stuff. Um, but uh, as an overview, we created these assets, and they are available to download in the Learn Guide. You can grab these bitmaps if you just want to show that, um, then get it up and running real quick without having to spend an hour or two figuring out what should I do for my bitmap, you know? One of the other assets that we give away to are the cutouts, so you have the exact dimensions of what the uh, screen of the uh, 32 by 64 matrix, the right. uh, PID 2278, which is, uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> I won't say what that is. <laughs> Oh. I was about to uh, spill the beans on what uh, something is. Spill the yeah, beans. check out uh, PID 2278. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that'll give you the exact dimensions you will need for that. And of course, they're in SVG, so you can edit the paths to have like a different sort of uh, opening or cracks if right. you want to indeed add that servo. Yeah, so foam core, that's great. It avoids having to print that giant tombstone. Which you were going to do. We going to do, but <laughs> we were like, yeah, let's just adapt it. Another thing that we added that we actually didn't get to uh, it's mention in the, in the video, but it's in the guide, are these legs. These legs here are actually just screwed directly into the foam core of, the, of this. With this tombstone, there's just two of them. You got two screws. We'll talk about the size of the screws and stuff. But these print out without any supports, and you can use these legs for standing up your props, not just um, the tombstone, but maybe a poster board or something like that. But it was really uh, critical that we created something to, to display our demo, because otherwise we'd have pan devices holding it up. And that's cool, and that's fine, but I already did the work here a couple weeks ago on uh, making a, a matrix display scoreboard. With Liz, we did that, and I figured this is a perfect design for that. I'm just going to use that, make the holes bigger, and uh, I printed those out, and they work out really well here uh, for our tombstone. So, uh, yeah, uh, these Mr. brackets. Real quick, yes. Mr. Certainly is asking to link the After Effects puppeteering plugin. I think it's actually yeah. built in, isn't it? Into uh, no, After there's Effects. a company called uh, Digital. I'm going to pull it up here. It's called like Digital Puppets, I think, or Digital Creature, Digital Characters. The puppeteering tool, though, is a part of After Effects. Yeah, Facts. it's so a does part the of facial tracking. It's a part of. We'll it. let you know a little bit. Uh, yeah. Probably 
just, just mentioned it now, one of the easiest ways that you can create it is right with your iPhone using the Memoji right. uh, feature. Yeah, but this is there. awesome. Digital Puppets is, uh, if you're an animator and you're working in the biz, like this is game changing for that. I've never worked in the animation industry, but like this makes these type of animations really, really quick and easy because it handles facial tracking, the mouth, the eyes, all that stuff. Very, very cool. Um, I've probably said too much, <laughs> but here's the link, certainly. You can check that out, Digital Puppets. And, and they have a bunch of them, and uh, that's sort of their business models. You, you, they sell you the, the assets, and then you can use them in After Effects for whatever project you're working on. But the pumpkin one is something I just searched, and uh, it was nicely already isolated in black, so I was like, okay, I can, I can, I can use this just for my demo. Uh, I'm not going to distribute it because that's probably not uh, within the the royal free stuff. So just keep that in mind when you're uh, if you share it, you might not want to. All right, but other than that, um, you can put whatever bitmap you want. It's spooky. And uh, some of the other things we uh, the other brackets well. are created <laughs> for this too. Oh, the brackets the... for the actual matrix. Yeah. So these brackets are specifically designed for the for this matrix. Uh, whatever PID page said, uh, and then uh, this additional bracket here allows you to screw it into foam core or foam, so that's nice. And then the other bracket we did was for the battery, the oh, five yeah, right. uh, thousand milliamp hour uh, battery. There it is. Uh, perfect for powering Raspberry Pi projects, and of course the Matrix portal's got enough uh, power for those. Yeah. So nice and easy to set that up. It's just the USB-C being plugged into there. And you can orient this anywhere. So perfect for you know screwing into yeah. like we were saying other types of frames. Right. You Maybe can just a, have the power poster, source, some sort of poster or, or custom um, prop that you put together out of wood or something. Maybe a coffin. I originally wanted to do a coffin because I saw these cool coffin animatronics at uh, I don't know Target I think, and they were like they had some uh, a ghost like in, inside the coffin that was like breaking out. I thought that was really neat. I actually wanted like these hands to come out with the servos. It was, it was a little bit over, uh, over engineered project that take too long. So this is what we got. <laughs> all right, we ready to jump into the learn guides? Yeah, we'll let's talk go more ahead about and the details. check out all the deets to this project. All right. So head on over to learn.adafruit.com. There's the learn guide. Nice little basic overview with a link to all of the parts you're going to need for this. Yeah, not too much, and they are in stock. Uh, we got, um, we got the, the Matrix portal is actually in stock right now, so folks want to pick it up. I just noticed that the photographs were updated with the, the new silk screen, so if you purchase one now, you get this lovely silk screen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Shout out to Phil B. So that's in stock. The, uh, the display is out of stock at the moment, but please sign up so that you get a notification through your email box when uh, they're back in stock. Same thing with the Black LED Acrylic. We did have a good batch of them in stock, but we ran out again. Thank you folks for purchasing them, but if you want some Black LED Acrylic, you can either sign up uh, for the email notifications or go to like topplastics.com and pick up uh, some Black LED Acrylic from them. Here's the battery that's in stock, and so is this USB-C cable, which is what we used. All right, all right. There's some prerequisite guides that we thought we'd like, um, particularly uh, you know, the Matrix Portal, just so you know a little bit more information about the Matrix Portal, installing CircuitPython on it. We also have that covered here in the learn guide, but I might as well link to the standalone guide so folks know all about the pinouts. Um, these two other learn guides, Pixel Art on RGB Matrix, these are from, uh, from JP and Melissa, and it'll just give you some more information on using and displaying bitmap pixel art on the display via the, uh, the Matrix portal and CircuitPython. So this will walk you through that. And then um, this page here, which is also part of the same learn guide, walks you uh, Gives you a nice breakdown of the animation basics, um, game animation frames. Um, here's a little nice little demo that you can have of a person walking by that JP put together. And then here's a whole breakdown of using um, a sprite program to create a sprite sheet for you. So let's say you want to um, take a GIF from the internet and turn it into a sprite sheet. This will walk you through doing that with this software. So you end up with this, basically a strip, a bitmap that's very, very tall. Um, it's 30, it's uh, 64 by 32, and then 32 is the height. So if you have 50 frames, you multiply 32 by 50, and that's your bitmap's height. The code and software already knows to do that for you, so you don't have to worry about that, but um, here's the, the comic strip that gives you a visual 
queue of like how this is working. So in the code, it's just like iterating through this. Um, and you can specify how long you want each frame to be. And uh, here's kind of like the thing walk in there. Uh, and then this is not playing, but it's probably just my browser. And then here's another um, video that, that walks you through it, or that gives you at least a demo of it. But yeah, that's that extra learn guide that really breaks down sprite animation um, in CircuitPython using Display.io and the Matrix Portal Library. Sweet. All right, let me go back. I think I... <laughs> Brent's saying that he has one of the Pipe Portals, but can't distract himself right now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's got the five millimeter RGB matrix, the smaller one. Oh, I want to Ooh, try one of those. Cute. Yeah, that'd be real cute for a desktop. Uh, something, something. All right, cool. But yeah, the matrix portal work with the a good, a good, a good range of the of the various sizes of LED matrices. Yeah, we have one of the thirty-two by thirty-two LED matrices yeah, just lying around. Fun. Popped yeah. in the matrix portal and the sand demo ran beautifully on it. That's it. Yeah. Excellent. All right, let's walk through the three printing. So we got the parts for you, bracket one, two, battery bracket. So uh, the first bracket, you need to screw it together with some screws, or you can just super glue them together and just use the, the images in the site to, uh, to reference how to, like the orientation of them, because you can probably put it in wrong. Um, so we have those linked, and we have CAD files for um, the matrix display, the Pi portal, I mean the matrix portal, and uh, you know the, the step files for all of the various brackets, so they're all here. When it comes to uh, 3D printing, we're using PLA filament. It's the easiest to work with, and uh, just some settings here that uh, that we're using. Yeah, you're gonna have to use some supports on the battery bracket. Okay. Uh, so I just set the uh, supports to be auto. Uh, drop the density down to 4%, and for the extrusion width, I should have typed an extrusion width on there, uh, I drop that all the way down to 0.2, so it's a lot thinner than all of the other uh, widths for the actual part, so you can easily just break that off. And then one of the other things um, is the Z height on that. I just have it uh, set to like 2 point, I mean 0 0.21, so it's a little bit easier to separate. Nice, okay. Other ancillary things are uh, stuff like uh, brim on support oh yeah that's a good idea that'll just, get more uh, adhesion to the bed just okay. hold on your uh, just hat hold on to the pillars a little bit more uh firmer okay not too much support just for those tabs yeah all right next page is watching the cir installing circuit python to the matrix pi portal i mean the matrix portal so you can uh make sure you use the latest version um use the alpha 2 there's a little note here oh, i didn't know that there's a bug with alpha 1 with the RGB matrix way, so skip that and use Alpha 2 or newer. All right, good note. Um, yeah, this just walks you through that. The installation process is pretty simple. You got a reset button, double tap it, put it in the bootloader mode, and then you can drag and drop a UF2 file onto it because it shows up like a USB drive, and it'll flash the firmware automatically or automatically. Circuit Python setup, just walking you through the library bundle. These are a good amount of libraries to use, especially if you want to do some Wi-Fi stuff. So that's why you see the ESP. 32 spy, and if you want to do some some I squared C sensors, that's what the bus device does, and Adafruit requests. So you can uh, do get post uh, HTTP requests via Wi-Fi, and then Adafruit I/O does all the data logging stuff that you can do. Cool. And then here's the actual code. The actual code is from uh, JP's uh, guide, and it's by Melissa. So this walks you through. Um, Downloading it, setting up your sprite, like the file structure. There's a folder called BMPS, it's supposed to be like bitmaps directory, and that's where you can drop in your bitmap files. You can have a multitude, as many as you can fit and store on the uh, on the two megabyte or is it eight megabyte splash? I forget which one. It's probably two. Um, so you can fit as many bitmaps as you like there, as long as uh, you have enough room. Here's the full code. It's commented. Uh, some things that you can change is the um, how many times you want it to play three times, uh, how, how much uh, duration do you want? That's 100 milliseconds, so it's pretty quick. If you want just to play slower, you can do that. Um, I think there's a custom setup. Yeah, frame duration overrides. So if you have some, some bitmaps that need some special timing, you can actually specify them here. So there's a few of them. And you just change the name of the bitmap here to whatever bitmap you want to have a specific uh, duration frame rate. So that's cool. 
Uh, you don't really need to play anything with the display setup here unless you have a different display, like the 64 by 64 or something. Um, but you would reference the, uh, the matrix portal guide if you want to change that. But everything else is fine. Here's the button setups. If you want to have different pins for different buttons, I guess you would change them here. Yeah. So check it out. Yeah, and this just walks you through. Uh, there's, there's comments and stuff, so you can read them. How it works, it's using display.io and the Adafruit matrix library. And basically, all the things we just talked about that you can change. So, And then here's an, uh, a video that shows you more kind of sprite sheets and um, what they look like. Cool. Shout out to Melissa and JP for putting it together. They made our, our jobs a lot easier because uh, it was already done for us. <laughs> mm. It's a great piece of code. I just want to iterate through these bitmaps. Here you go. Slideshow. Bam. All right, let's walk through the assembly real quick. Uh, so this is fun. Um, cutting foam, there is a hot knife that you can get. And we got ourselves a hot knife. This comes with three different tips. And let's run through Pedro's video here on uh, walking through it. Yeah, so this was actually my first time cutting any foam, and I used this long one just because of the thickness of the uh, tombstone. So very easy, just let it heat up. It takes about a minute or so, and you can just cut through it like a hot knife through butter. It's called a hot knife. It's easy. So I taped the template right on top of there with uh, some double stick tape. You're able to just remove that afterwards, and then you can clean it up, or you can just leave all those uh, spiderweb looking mm. um, yeah, because like, it's uh, melty bits. So. Leftovers on that. And then I just painted the inside to sort of match it. I didn't want it to be yeah, white know, wouldn't contrast with the contrast mm -hmm. with the, the matrix would be a, a good look. So you can paint that in, add some more scuffs to it. And then we're using the, I think you have it listed there, I forget what the wood screws mm -hmm. uh, that we were number using. 12. Number 12. Uh, They're in the line guide. We'll walk through it. Yeah, so to get these shots, we did some fun fog machine stuff in the garage, which is fun. We had the kiddo push the button. Yes. And uh, there I am in my PJs. <laughs> That's how we do film. This is a garage. So much, uh, a lot of fog, fog, a lot of fun. <laughs> so this should look cool uh, during Halloween if you have uh, any you know, festivities going on for that. Uh, probably a good place to put these would be in a window. Or if you know your climate isn't as bad, they should fare well outside as long as there isn't any moisture. How long there. do you think this took you to do? The, uh, the foam cutting? The foam cutting. Like an hour? At all. No. Less than an hour? Yeah. Okay. Depends on the intricacy of your design. Yeah. Um, how so your hand is and all that. This was like your second time. The first time was just a simple circle oval. Mm -hmm. and it did not look as good. I'll yeah, it looked, it, I think that would look great if you have your traditional photo. So if it's an eyeball, I yeah, think that might eyeball, look cool. I but I like cool. how the, you know, the depth of this uh, sort of layering it on top mm -hmm. of the matrix. It uh, gives you more depth, I think. A little bit more interesting. With, this, uh, with the shape. That's yeah, cool. so a nice little addition to your little grave. Yeah, and um, you know you can cut some letters out and do all sorts of fun stuff with foam. Mm -hmm. We've never really used foam that much. We've used like foam core poster boards and things, but yeah. um, you know these props are made out of foam, so you might as well get the tool to do the job. And I was surprised and that there wasn't expensive. a lot of uh, like smoke or anything. I had the garage open, right for the feed, had a fan blowing, and I didn't see too much smoke coming out of there at all. Excellent. All right. Which I must have certainly just posted. To make sure you have good ventilation. Yep. Uh, you can create some very toxic fumes without even realizing, yeah, I didn't see any smoke coming out, but I knew there had to be something coming out. You know, there's yeah. styrene and stuff in the styrofoam, so. Right, fair warning then. All right. Yep. Cool. Man, you can get uh, some foam if you want to create your own things. I think I saw some, some videos uh, out there that uh, show how to create props with, uh, with foam. Mm -hmm. So coffins and tombstones. Sweet. All right, back over to the learn guide. That's linked to... Over here, if you guys want to pick up this tool. Yeah, and that should up like next day. So uh, yeah. definitely inexpensive, great tool to have around for. I think you can even do like wood burning maybe with it. Not yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, cool. So we got an SVG file. It's a vector graphics file uh, yep. for uh, of this circle cutout here. So it's yeah. sized for it's it's sized for the uh, the display PID two two seven eight. So if you want to change any of the cracks on there, if you don't want the uh, that little tiny piece of the crack to be not as uh, thin, you can update mm -hmm. the thickness of that, or just completely uh, use it as the template for the inside of the oval there for the matrix. Cool. Moving right along, simple installation for the matrix portal. It comes with the cables. We shortened these up quite a bit. Uh, definitely measure those out, obviously, mm -hmm. before you uh, do that. 
and uh, we're just uh, using some heat shrink to uh, tubes to yeah. uh, seal that up. And it comes with all of the uh, bolts you're gonna need to hook that up to Let the, update this, uh, the solder standoff reel. solder soldered right onto the uh, matrix portal. I just wanna update this with the M3 kit because they're actually M3 screws. We got M3 screw kit. Oh, now. they're not the two fives. Oh, no, okay. not two five. You could use two five, but it'd be floppy. So let's go ahead and update ah. that and let folks know it's a uh, two uh, M M3, <laughs> M3 screws. What we're talking about here is the uh, bracket that will attach the matrix to the foam. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's in two pieces, so you don't have to print mm -hmm. any supports together. Right. And again, you can use uh, super glue super to, glue, uh, yeah. to hook these up. Just uh, reference the photo, make sure right. that they are attached correctly. Right, because you can attach them wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they are spaced out, so the matrix portal uh, doesn't interfere with any of the brackets that's or right. the cables. There it is, yeah. I did, that's why it's offset quite a bit, because of... Uh, the, the board just hangs off the edge a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. One of the things we wanted to play with was the distance from the uh, black LED acrylic to the actual matrix, because if you are doing something like a ghost, you will create more of like a, um, like a faded, like spooky effect with mm -hmm. that, uh, like a ghost is. So you can play with the distance of that. You could just add like some standoffs uh, in between. Um, and then, uh, oh, one thing that we didn't even mention on how we actually attach the LED, um, black, the black LED matri yeah. uh, acrylic. acrylic was with uh, some of these glue dots that uh, JP found. Yeah, we might want to link to we'll link uh, those, his yeah. live streams because he probably walks through using it, some it, yeah. tips on like, you don't want to cut it with scissors because it'll get stuck to your scissors. Yeah. So there's some little tips there, but yeah. Little we, tiny pieces on each corner. We've moved from 3D printing the corner brackets to, let's just use some sticky adhesives because yeah. it really is a it's way a lot more easier. Faster. Yeah, way faster and more. Uh, it gives you more area, surface area to work with mm -hmm. so you're not like covering up the corners. So and in our really case, nice. with the brackets that are attached, you don't want to uh, have like layered uh, brackets on there. It'll make it a little bit more difficult to adjust things. Yeah, let's make a note real quick in there. Add pro tape sheets, pro tapes, adhesive sheets to guide because <laughs> we really should do that we could look at our other old guide though that one did link it i think what, what other old guide yeah we did um oh geez i forgot already <laughs> what well, past matrix portal we I did. Think we did i think it was just like an overview video for it yeah right. okay right, moving yeah, I think you're right, right okay. along we're using the do you have a list of yeah, there? so the wood screws that are being attached to the foam yeah they're down here they're uh, M4, or sorry, they're number 12, which are equal to an M6 screws. And uh, they're 92 millimeters of spacing between the tabs. That's if you really need to know, but I have this link here to the screws. Um, they are from McMaster Car, but they're, fr they're fairly short. They're half inch short. Um, so it's like 12 millimeters or so. And uh, yeah, again, the, the diameter is 0.2 inches, which is like six millimeters for 5.5. And then I wanted a big button head uh, so that it would uh, give you more I mean, uh, as a washer. Yeah, it acts as a washer. And you get this nice big head. So uh, yeah, these, are meant, these aren't really wood screws. They're meant for like sheet metal because I couldn't find any wood screws that are this short hmm. um, in this thick. Number 12 is what they are. The, the Imperial is uh, number 12. And again, I think it's an M5 or M6 is what you can use for those holes. Cool. <laughs> Screws. Screw talk. Um, yeah, so I have them linked uh, right here, yeah. And they're, again, for uh, screwing into the foam. We're originally going to use the make dues that That's we right. stock in the store. Pedro, what are make dues? So it's <laughs> a really cool way to connect uh, cardboard together. So you can make, like, hinges or, uh, like, moving parts for that. I think yeah. we're showing the... Um, yeah, they, they're Website here. now? Yeah, we are. We have a couple of different packs. Yeah, I just ordered one. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if we're going to re... I don't know what's going on. We could 3D print them, but like, they're not that great because the, look at the overhang. It's mm -hmm. super extreme. But these are great for, uh, for cutting into uh, cardboard and I guess foam. We were going to try foam, but it didn't, we didn't have enough. Um, but yeah, they're, these, they're fun for the kids and I guess for these bigger projects. Uh, so you can, uh, and it also comes with a cardboard cutter, which is kind of neat. We were going to use those, but we didn't have any. <laughs> so we, uh, we put an order in and uh, we used wood, uh, the whatever screws. I even say they're wood screws, they're not. <laughs> whatever. Sheet metal. Sheet metal. 
in any manner. You can, or you can put them wherever you like. You can see I, I have some holes here from using thinner screws. <laughs> it didn't quite work. It's not work at all. It didn't work at all. No, they just came right out. It's like shit. All right, so there you go. <laughs> and there you have it. Yeah. This nice little LED matrix tombstone. You can, of course, attach this to any number of frames, hang it up anywhere, add servos, add a PIR, sound. Right, there's game. lots of LEDs you can add to this. And there's so LEDs much more eyes, expansion yeah. ports you can add uh, to here. You can power LEDs from here. You can feed power into this uh, port. It's pretty nice. What do we want to do over here? I forget, you have a stem port on the back there too, so you can expand on all that. Right. You have the three usable button or user buttons. Right, so you can cycle through them. Um, yeah, there's some analog digital pins there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you got your stem uh, QT connector there. And of course, it's Wi-Fi, so if you wanted to change the message via Wi-Fi or do something, tr yeah. trigger something when somebody tweets at you, we got some good demo code there. Yep, we're just scratching the surface of what you can do with this. For this real, is, yeah. Uh, again, more of an inspiration. Yeah. You can attach this. Yep, very cool. And what else can we talk about? Yeah, USB-C connector, really nice, fully mm -hmm. reversible. Yeah, depending on uh, battery. what your orientation is, you can get like the right angle connectors as well. I like that you left. Look at that. The battery's about to die <laughs> right there. <laughs> How long is this battery going to last, folks are asking, I bet. <laughs> we don't Hopefully know. throughout the whole show. <laughs> Hopefully throughout the whole show. It's, yeah, we haven't recharged it, but uh, you might want to have it plugged into the wall via a, uh, like a five volt um, power supply, perhaps. The USB thing. We got one of those in the shop, too. All right, and that's this week's project. LED ah. matrix. Yep, LED, RGB matrix, tombstone, matrix portal. Yay. Bye. Ah. Cool. All right. Take a break here. Take some water. What's up with right. the chats? Anything? Let's go ahead and jump into what we're prototyping. What are we prototyping? All right. Moving on to prototyping. We have another tombstone. We have another tombstone. It's right there. 3D printed tombstone. This is using the Halloween M4. So the Halloween M4 is fitted it there. The 3D printed tombstone. This is black LED acrylic with some vinyl mask. Here's the back, very plain and simple. LEDs are mounted to the back plate here. The battery is at the bottom here, so it's portable. Uh, this is a 4400, but you can fit whatever battery you'd like in the bottom because it snap fits open. And uh, I'm using the little JST extension cable for a toggle switch right here, so you can turn it on and off. Um, some things here, I've broken out, uh, I've, I've exposed, you can't see it, but there's a hole there that exposes the light sensor that's built into the board. So if you want to use that to dim the eyes, you can do that. This is just running um, some demo code, uh, NeoPixel Rainbow demo code. And again, black LED acrylic, snap fits into this faceplate. This faceplate is 3D printed, it looks clean and simple because, I mean, it looks super clean like the service, because vinyl, I actually just put some vinyl in the front there. And uh, this is your kind of stock eye, the hazel color. And uh, there's some 3D printed details to add on there. You got a skull and all these little details, but it's supposed to be a tombstone. And uh, you fit it on your desk. You can vinyl cut your own messages and stuff. Um, very similar to uh, last month's or whatever month's um, busy kind of sign. <laughs> Maybe you can say I'm busy on there. Here's the on-air one that I still have from that one too. So. With, kind of, of course, the, the addition of the Halloween eye. With the addition of the Halloween eye, yeah. So, the ho so what's cool about this, let's see if we can fit this in the, uh, there it is. You can see the Halloween eye has a NeoPixel port. So I literally just plug into the NeoPixel port and uh, it's ready to go. I do have to solder it onto these mini skinny strips, whatever. The mini skinny strips are just uh, um, taped to this here. So that's cool. Uh, you still have access to the USB port. Of course, you have those touch pads, but if you're embedding this, can't access them. You could always use some tape or something, uh, some copper tape um, to to have to break these out in front. You also have another port here uh, that's a, the chunkier stemma for sensors. So if you want to add another sensor breakout, you can do that. And then uh, there's another three port. So you have two of these three uh, pin ports that you can use. And then of course the speaker is already built in, so it has an amplifier. And oh yeah, there's an accelerometer. And really awesome is it has an eight megabyte flash chip. So you have plenty of room oh, wow. for bitmaps and everything. I really feel like this M4 eyes was kind of, uh, what would you call it? 
It didn't get a lot of love last year because of timing, I think. Yeah, it came out right at the end of right. Halloween. So one of the cool things about it, besides that, is also the IS, uh, IPS display. That's right. So you can see the... It's a lot it's higher a resolution. lot better. It is. The pixels are nicely packed in there. This camera does not do its justice. No. It looks so good mm -hmm. in all the angles. It probably looks so better in different detail. angles. Um, and you can adjust the brightness. And of course, there's that light sensor there. So uh, in the code, you can tell it so that if over time, you can have this dim if there's less light in the room. And of course, you can do NeoPixel stuff while you're animating the eye. Not, not a lot of folks, I think, know that. And um, I didn't know that either. To reiterate again, all the other ports on it, you can attach a servo, you can attach more audio, you can have... Uh... Audio's already built in. It has an amplifier, it has mm -hmm. an accelerometer. It has too much stuff, like, you can't even use 10% of it because it's... Mm -hmm. it, it, it would, yeah, it would, take, it would be quite a big build. Another thing to note as well... I just snap it off. Up. It does come with... We're showing it off here, and it's lovely orange. Oh, right, so the, yeah. Uh, PCB for that. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is, of course, pumpkin spice season. So yeah, it's gonna be it's, orange. It's pumpkin spiced. That's right. And we're they're in stock right now. Here's the the battery connector. It's just a little switch here, to turn on and off. You also have a built-in on-off switch, but we don't have access to it once it's embedded. So that's why we have this switch here. Mm -hmm. uh, it cuts the power. But yeah, it's great to have uh, lots of uh, demo code for the Halloween M4 and. Probably talk a little. Well, we'll talk about it more last week's and next week's project about the code, how to use the user-defined programs to kind of do some side tasks while the eye is going. We have a good assortment of them. And let me uh, load up the Halloween product page because it's in stock. It's it's so in stock that we don't have a number of showing how how many are left in stock. So I think we have a good amount of them. So they're in stock, it has lots of stuff, built-in screen. If you don't want to do Halloween projects, you can still do some awesome projects with it. We've done a few. Um, and here's what I meant, like if you go to the learn guide, there's only one learn guide, two, but one project made with it. And that was last year's little candy bowl thing where I uh, used the side light LEDs. Uh, Cause, oh yeah, I didn't even mention, it has yes. built-in LEDs, like take a look. I feel like, again, like I just feel like folks there's missed so it or didn't see features. the reason to update it, but yeah, there's a lot built into it. Um, that was a fun shot. Remember we filled up the candy bowl? This mm -hmm. is the candy bowl that I bought from Target, and I took the eye out and put this eye instead. So, very cool. A lot of, per a lot of accessories, too. A little... Remember when we couldn't find the Convex lens? Oh, they're still out of stock. <laughs> the glass ones, anyway. Or the plastic ones. But in any manner... Um, it's in stock. Pick it up if uh, if you want to play around with it. All right. Some comments. Uh, Devo's just saying that uh, he likes when we talk about when things go wrong. It helps people remember that things don't always go right in the process. Yeah. And it's a uh, try it to make it. We got some people following up on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. People don't want to feel like they're failures when they're frying something. We fried plenty of things. I think the Matrix, uh, one of them. Yeah, the first one I fried because I used a 12-volt. Uh, <laughs> um, I used a 12-volt power supply. I plugged it in and smoked right up. Yeah. <laughs> very bad day. Or <laughs> if you like solder the wrong thing, you got to resolder it. And then it or like, cutting your acrylic up. wrong. Like you cut the acrylic and it's too mm -hmm. short. You're like, I thought I measured it. Or you scar your um, your LED acrylic while you're trying to uh, cut it. Or you hit print on uh, one of the printers where you didn't remove previous parts <laughs> and it prints right on top of it. it. Crushes it. <laughs> yeah. Mark Gallagher saying, that. yeah, frying is like a badge of honor. Bonus points if you make the smoke come out. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Well, I'm glad everybody's tuned in. Like the failures. <laughs> yeah. We used to have fails. We had one recently. I'll put it up. Uh, next week. Oh, Remember you got a photo of it? I got a video, video of it. it. I know. Yeah. I was too rushed to try to fix uh -huh. it to get any snaps of it. It's really fun. It's a really good it? fail. Like, whoa, this thing's eating itself. Like, yeah. yeah. The filming got all up into the, uh, to the bearings and yeah, it was a mess. <laughs> okay. Well, that was fun. All right. Um, let's jump into the, this week's community megs. Uh, before that, you have a new layer by layer that oh, explains yeah. working with constraints and sketches. I actually have a video thing of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a nice uh, back to the basics of uh, learning how to sketch with constraints. What are they? Why do you use them? How do you use them? And a little bit of tips on how I like to center my designs with the origins in Fusion so that uh, I can make some symmetrical designs. That's one of the first things I have to do is create a freaking origin. It's like <laughs> crazy. It's like, yo, start off with the center, please. So definitely check it out if you are interested. All right, now we can do community makes. Yay. All right, this week. We had to find out what, the, what Among Us is, <laughs> so we found out what it was. Not a very good explanation when the top uh, way to explain what this project is is... The uh, game? Yeah. It's it, a video game, by the way. I keep referring it to as a in imposter game, which I had no idea what that was, and then what they kept that? referring to Mafia, which I've never heard of either. But in any case, this is a really cool <laughs> case. AirPod uh, case. Mm -hmm. So a nice little themed uh, thing for a uh, popular thing is always good. So mm -hmm. I really like the design on this one. I didn't have to do any modifications to it. It uh, fits like a glove. Yeah. And uh, the little uh, visor there just uh, snaps Very in. Very cute. Yeah, super cute. deceivingly cute because they are uh, murderous characters or something. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, certainly Bruce is saying that, yeah, it's a social deception game. Social deception game. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the only videos that we could find were like these 30 minute long ones where it's like showing all this gameplay. It's like, yeah, just explain to me. I had to go to Wikipedia to find out what it was. But uh, originally it came out 2018, blew up, of course, with uh, the pandemic. And uh, yeah, you can find out more about it there. But excellent design here. It's my notes. It's, on, uh, <laughs> so so the the notes. it's not thing of ours. It's called 3D. Oh, That's why crap. I'm like, I need right. to pull yeah. it up because you can't just. Okay, focus. There it is. So shout out to Cults 3D. Great never, marketplace for they designers. Really, they have a lot of really good uh, curated things. When it loads, yeah. Yeah, one of the things, uh, <laughs> I think it doesn't have an RSS feed. That's how I find all of the other uh, uh, blog posts, so. Okay, cool. There yeah, it is. nice little accent, uh, three piece design. You can glue the visor right on top. And like I was saying, it's for the uh, original AirPods. Right. Which I actually kind of like a little bit better. And the pros. For whatever reason, my ears. ears like, but yeah. Yeah, the pros, they hurt my ears. Like after Dirt, like a yeah. half hour of yeah. like playing audio. And you've tried all the different sizes. I've tried all the sizes buds. for different. Yeah. yeah. But if you go to the overhead, you can take a look at oh. We're just using the, um, I think it's like melt ink red with some of the marble um, Soltec uh, PLA. PLA there. Yeah. Does and it like slide right out? The, uh... Yeah, so it slides oh, right out. You have a port for the bottom. Uh, the I don't know how that's, that's going to work when you plug in a uh, your lightning cable into that. So, so yeah, work? nothing glues on. It all just snap fits in, except the visor Legos. And I just used a double stick tape for that. And yeah, excellent uh, tolerances for that. Yeah, uh, no, modif no modifications That's for that. That's great, yeah. And you yeah. got your little space here so that hinge doesn't run into anything. Yeah, great design. And of course you can print these up in uh, any of the, what is it, 10 colors or whatever that they have for the players. Yeah, so we saw a video on like why is it popular and how did it, it had to go, it had to do with COVID and um, Twitch creators on Twitch like exploded it and right now it's like one of the most popular mm -hmm. um, games that are being played on Twitch. And, and it, it works well because you can do up to 10 people so everybody can play around. And I guess one of them is, uh, is uh, what do you call it? The, the deceptive deception person. person yeah. It's an imposter <laughs> running around. Imposter, yeah. And uh, Bruce is saying that, yeah, just go, lesson for everyone, just goes to show that even a small project you create can uh, have widespread popularity even long after you make it, which we've seen with a right. lot of the projects They talked that we about make. the views and stuff because it came out in 2017 and nobody was playing it. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they find out it just skyrocketed in one of the months, I think in September, it just skyrocketed. And how does it make its way to us? This 3D printed thing. How weird, <laughs> right? How it, it transcends um, mm -hmm. industries and... So uh, scenes, the gamer Twitch scene, somehow now it's in the maker scene because some guy liked mm -hmm. it and thought he'd print it. It's a great little print, it's cute. Yeah, there's a couple of other ones that focus on like having the little bones and the, the mm -hmm. little intestines mm -hmm, right. in there. I really like these. It's uh, so practical. Very practical, yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to make one like for the, the pros, but you know, it's just so wide, it's not, this one's already wide enough that I think it okay. would uh, 
start detracting from what the, um, the visual look of the Among Us yeah. uh, would be. There's mine. I put a lightning bolt on it. Anyway. Cool. Excellent little print. Yep. Uh, I forget what all the stats for it there is. It's in the time lapse and how long it took to print. It was like three hours just because of the time lapse. Sure. When you yeah. park the, the head and all that. That takes a little time. Cool. All right. Check it out. Free download there. Yep. Cold 3D. Give them a follow. They got some good um, curated yeah. designs that mm -hmm. are both free and paid for. So support your local artists. Yeah, even the paid for ones are usually like a buck or two. So mm -hmm. definitely worth checking out. All right. Excellent. Cool. Well, we're going to close up the show. So we're going to say goodbye to everybody. And then we'll do our lineup of shows as we exit. Let's run it through the show notes. Yep. Yeah, that you nailed everything. Thanks for the Lair by Lair lunch. I almost completely forgot about it. I'll have a blog post promoting it, too. Um, don't forget about AdaBox. Um, it's, it's a really fun one. Yep. And uh, we don't know what it is. We just don't. Coming out soon. It's, a totally <laughs> it's uh, so close to launch that Lamar's already working on the next AdaBox. <laughs> for sure, yeah. <laughs> All right. Make sure to tune in on Sundays for from the desk of Lady Aida. You can get some uh, some DigiKey search help and what she's working on. It happened uh, last Sunday at around nine to ten p.m. All well, totally cool stuff. Check out the Stemma Buddy. I have him on my side here. He's like a shoulder puppet. <laughs> and then on Tuesdays, tune in with JP's workshop. I mean JP's product pick of the week every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Let's definitely stop by. We haven't been doing coupon codes for a while, but you can get automatic, I think it was 40% off yeah. on some of the stuff. 40 boards. or 50 bananas. You have to yes. watch the show in order to get that discount. It only happens live yes. during the show, so definitely check out John Park's Pick of the Week. Yeah, I think it was the uh, Cutie Pie uh, so last cute. week. Or no, this week on this Monday, week. Tuesday. This Tuesday. Yesterday. Yes. Yeah, and then today is Wednesday. <laughs> we do this show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Um, we might want to update our graphics at some point. Hmm. We just got another PT email, so we're like, mm hmm. Are we promoting something? Tonight is a full slot, a couple slots. We invite you to join us with the, uh, at the show and tell. This is a great opportunity for folks from the community to come by and Show what you're working on, what you want to work on, retro tech, all that stuff is, is welcome. Happens every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Take about um, three minutes to talk your thing and um, mute your mics. But make sure you jump into the Discord chat room because that's where the, uh, the invite link to StreamYard or YardStream um, is posted in the live broadcast chat room where we're hanging out right now. So we'll pop in the link at around 7.20ish. Um, so folks can get in and get their mic set up. But then after that, it runs for about a, a half hour. And then at 8 p.m. is uh, Ask an Engineer with Lamar and Phil, full hour of uh, new products, um, top secrets, um, all the things. <laughs> they have so many segments. There's so many, yeah, especially with the uh, backup of uh, so from COVID. Python. There's so many Newsletter. products that are just now getting uh, shown off now or being built. I'll put it in the back burner, so lots of exciting stuff. Yeah, super cool. Ooh, uh, got Yanni nice... posting some really cool ideas for an additional. Let's do a Stargate, Stargate one. Uh, that looks so sweet. Look at that, <laughs> that's awesome. The Halloween Stargate. Oh, look at that animation. <laughs> Where? I don't see an animation. Uh, oh, that would be great, yeah. Oh, there it is. Man, all the awesome We could We could turn that into a bitmap. Huh? Yeah. Oh. I'll have to check out, learn. Uh, JP's learn guide to, to use this A sprite. Hmm. That, that is so super cool. Sweet. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> wow. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for the show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope everybody stays safe out there. And don't forget, too, until Make next time. Have a great day. Have a great day. Bye, See folks. You,